Blog Talk Radio. Hey guys, it's your girl Sunny D. Welcome to tonight's show. Um, today is February 3rd, 2020. Happy Black History Month. Clint, you want to say hi? Hey, what's going on, good people? Happy Black History Month. You know what I mean? And so, y'all know what it is. We've got a great show lined up. So, y'all, Sunny came on with mad energy. She was just mad dogs in the, uh, in the pre, uh, pre-show. <laughs> She jumped on the mic and had this mad energy out of nowhere. Got me confused real quick, but, you know what I mean? We're here. It's, I'm tired, but I'm trying to mask my tiredness. I don't know. It's been, <laughs> now you be having long days and you're just trying to push through. That's what that's what's happening right now. Because I'm definitely ready to take it down. I ain't having no wine. I'm about to get me a glass and y'all start talking. Like, it's about to be real in these streets. I might eat a brownie. <laughs> Who knows? Um. Oh, man, I need a brown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see now, Willie, Willie come in all, you know what I mean, all dog. You feel me? Pick that energy up, beloved. Oh, oh no, no, I didn't know what the, I didn't know what you. What you were <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do like six things at once. Oh, I could dig it. I can dig it. That's how it be. That's the life. That's the life of parents and and us. us people that pay bills, we got to do too much stuff at one time, but, yeah, um, that's yeah, true. Yeah, right. If you're listening right now, you're on blogtalkradio.com, um, for slash GST radio show, listen to the playback zone, uh, everywhere, just everywhere. I don't even know Google Play Music, SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, uh, uh, what is it, what is it, Spotify, Spotify we have Stitcher, Stitcher, yep. we just just Google us, GFT Radio Show, and you'll find us everywhere. Just follow, like, subscribe, do all that jazz. Um, go cop some merchandise. Definitely go to teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash GFT Radio. Cop some merchandise. I got to go on there because um, I think I'm going to get another local shirt. Now I'm going yawn in the middle of a podcast. This is terrible. This is how I'm really tired, y'all. I'm really tired. It's real. I've been listening to... I don't know if y'all been following on social media, but I just that, that's what started playing Clint in the, in the beginning of the show. So they have like these different DJs that mix these um, church songs, and they got this song called "Jesus Is Real," right? And it's like it's catchy, and they got like people just they got they got like different clips of people dancing. They got somebody be walking. They got people shaking their ass. I'm like y'all know this for Jesus, right? Like, but it's so many different like, got different celebrities dancing, but it's all on beat. But I just, you know, thought it was a bit much if you got somebody twerking on 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 the Jesus is real. It ain't it ain't real right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that that's kind of and be walking like mm-hmm. like I'm like that's not that's not that's not of Jesus. I don't know what you see y'all playing to. That might not work out. <laughs> <laughs> that keeps playing in my head. Cause I've been watching mad videos with the different dances and it's hilarious. It's hilarious, but it's wrong on so many levels. So if y'all right. see that, like, okay. I see all different ones. Yeah. Like, I gotta check that out. I gotta check that out. Yeah, if you was on Facebook, I sent it to you, but you know you broke up with Facebook, so we can't do that. Yeah, oh, nah, nah, you know, I ain't never going back to Facebook. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to find. It, it gotta be on YouTube because it's a video. It's like a it's video. Probably on Twitter. You know, everything on Twitter first. Okay. Hit Twitter first before hit Facebook and uh, IG. It always hit Twitter first. Yeah, it's always yeah, that's yeah that no that is true. Twitter, Twitter spirit. Yeah, there's, there's a wealth of resources out there on Twitter. Right. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> on everywhere. It's like it's crazy how much stuff yeah. you can find just out there on the internet and different places, different things you can share. So yeah, it's 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 crazy. What is that? Definitely, definitely. But if you guys are listening to our conversation, you want to join us six five seven three eight three one one five five. Um, guys, I want to start off with. Uh, which I want to start with because we got um, we're gonna have the interview a little bit later on. Oh well, uh, the show. What about that, huh? Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Break it down. Break it down one time for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, sorry, I'm a little airheaded and sleepy, but I'm trying to be upbeat. I'm trying to be positive. Anyway, the name of the show is called How How Money Moves and Making Money Moves, right? I, I when I read that I was like what wait a minute I feel dumb I had took me a minute to get it because like I had a slow day and then I said like, oh it makes sense 
But um, we're talking about how you can make money. You know, we were talking about um, last a uh, couple weeks back, we talked about entrepreneurship and all those things you could do for yourself to make yourself make some money. But we we want to we're going to be interviewing two gentlemen that are um, making money moves and they they they're in the podcasting game. I believe one is in got, got a whole bunch of different businesses going on. I don't know about I don't know that much about the one guy, but I do know about Phil. So he got a lot going Phil, on. So Phil's he's got down books. So that's yeah, the name yeah. right. That's same yeah. guy. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, Phil right. Phil right. From, from the rap, from the rap and dope, from the rap and dope podcast. Yeah, I wasn't going to spoil it. Spoil it. I said I wanted to introduce yourself. That's why I wasn't going to spoil the surprise. But you no, know, people read it anyway. Mm-hmm. I hate y'all. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Well, it's, you know what I mean? They even did the fly. They did the dope fly, too, for us. Shout us out on their uh, on, on they okay. IG. Well, that's dope to tell. Um, yeah, but we're going to be in those chats. We're going to pick their brains about what they're doing and how they're making big money moves and making money moves for them. So definitely tune in to that. Um, um, so you can call in and chime in if you guys want to um, ask questions. Well, call in 657-383-1155 or just call in just to listen. I don't know. Do what you want. But um, it is it is Black History Month, and we decided, the lovely folks here at GFT Radio decided that we wanted to do some highlights throughout Black History Month. You know, we Black History is 365, as everybody keep reminding us, but this is our month to be, you know, on, on, on Blackly Blackness, like, you know, mil- Melanin is extra popping. We on extreme blackness. So, um, uh, hey, I, 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 I said this is the month others will be celebrating us because we, we should be celebrating ourselves 365. But this is the, this is the month for others to learn our history and to celebrate us. <laughs> yeah, and learn a little bit from the King and you know the usual suspects. Exactly, yep. exactly. So are we going to do that now? We're we going to uh, wait to the after. Oh show? yeah, I'm with. No, I'm with that. I'm with. You know, like you said, we, 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 we start we, now and then then get into it with them, and then when we done, then we can go into the after show. All right. All right. Yeah. So we all pick different things we want to highlight, whether it was a person and their achievement, or do a poem or something like that. So who wants to go first? I go first. I uh, since we're doing it that way. Uh, okay. I wanted to highlight Kenny Washington. I did. I posted okay. him early on my IG and uh, on my blog. He was the first uh, black uh, NFL player, to, first black person to sign a uh, contract to the NFL in the modern era. Uh, he was. He he actually did it before. He was the first black person period to integrate p- professional sports in the United States. Uh, but he 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 rarely talked about because you know at the time football wasn't as popular as baseball, so mm-hmm. uh, you know that's why we always hear about Jackie Robinson, Jackie Robinson because mm-hmm. that's America's pastime. But Jackie Robinson, who also was uh, Kenny Washington's teammate in college at UCLA on the football team along with Woody Strode, who also played that, in all, that, that that season. He started out with Kenny Washington. Kenny Washington was just the first one to sign a uh, contract, but they both played that season before, a full year before Jackie Robinson played in the uh, major leagues. And that's where Branch Rickey, the, uh, the, the owner of the Yankees, that's uh, who actually – I mean the Dodgers, excuse me. That's who actually. That's where he actually got the idea from, from because uh, he said if the blacks, if blacks and whites can coexist in such a violent sport as football, with nothing crazy happening, then surely they mm-hmm. can do it in baseball. Mm-hmm. So that's why right. he. You no, know I mean so that's why he was able to uh, sign Jackie Robinson, and. Also, one of the you know I pointed him out, and I also mentioned Woody Strode because they also were like dominant in college. As you said, you know, they got the book called the uh, the uh, the Bruins, the Black Bruins, mm-hmm. uh, the Black Bruins, 
Yeah, it's, 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 it's those three and a couple other people that was uh, a couple other brothers that was on that squad. And it was a real dominant squad. So you know, and they they had a lot to do with integration and uh and college football. But also the one interesting thing about Kenny Washington is that he he's he he's been inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, but he has yet mm-hmm. to be inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame, which I think, uh, you know, because I posted a link to the article on the bottom of my IG, Kings True Six Hundred Nine, that I, I I would like people to uh, check out as well about that because I'm like, that's something, that's something, you know, in today's time, American football is the number one sport in America. Yes. Yeah. You feel me? Not baseball anymore. Football has, has has far surpassed baseball, and it's been like that for quite some time. And you know, people really don't know the history of football, and, or you know what I mean, our place in football. So, you know, what I mean, I thought that was dope. I just wanted to highlight the brother because, you know, he he really gets any mention as being the first black person to to integrate. Uh, professional sports in America, Kenny Washington. Yes. Oh. That's, dope. That's dope. It was so I dope. I decided to steal that this morning, and yeah, uh, he stole it from you know, <laughs> I literally just picked the whole page up and put it right on mine. I was like, "We out here stealing, stealing today." Uh, I, I apologize, Clint, man. I I, I, just, I, I saw your. Stop. It was so funny. I saw I saw your your comment, and I was like, "Is he thanking me or what is he talking about?" And I looked. I was like, oh, I knew I got distracted this morning because I was literally <laughs> rewriting. As you can see, I put a little hashtag at the front. I was literally mm-hmm. rewriting the the thing to put, like, you know, how I was going to credit your spite on it, and, and I got distracted, man. I prob- I, I definitely apologize. I, I, I promise, you know, blame the, blame the head, not the heart. You know, I, I, I did correct it. I did correct it. So. <laughs> but, hey, good information. Good information travels fast. So, you know, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> What'd you say? I said we can reblog that from your blog to the GFC radio site. Oh yeah, we no do doubt, that. no yeah. doubt, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I didn't know that. That's fine for my parents, something like that. So I like to be aware of things. I'm pretty sure, you know, like I think that we we learn as much as people get to learn our history. I think sometimes we also get to learn our history as well. The things yeah, that we no know. doubt. And, and and then like I, you'd be so proud. Like we are, we are, like you just said. And then a, a sport that so many of us love, so many of our. Uh, kids or relatives play, you feel me, and so many black men, I will guarantee you in the, in the, in the NFL, don't know that information. Mm-hmm. You, feel yeah. me? you feel me? They making millions and millions and really, like, he he's one of the pioneers. He's somebody that should be thanked, you know what I mean, celebrated yeah. for, you know what I mean, because we can only imagine what he had to go through, you know what I mean? Right. Like, Still in, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Back that you talking about the 1940s, 50s? Like, come on, 1950s? Like, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. So, next. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So you want to go um, next? Yeah. Um, I can, I can go. It's cool. Uh, all right, so. Today, I want to uh, recognize uh, Claudette Colvin. Um, oh, good one. Yeah, so. Oh, oh, you know about Claudette. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so this was just another case of, uh, you know, not not to say that we we gotta we gotta really push the agenda of who did it first, but sometimes it's important to recognize, like you said, Clint, when someone goes through something and they do something, sometimes they don't get the credit that that they deserve or they don't get the credit that you know that's due them. Claudia Coven was, you know, was was one of those people. Um, a lot of people don't really know her name, don't really know her story. Um, they they kind of know her story, but from a different a different person's perspective. Uh, what some people may not know uh, is that Claudia Coven is actually is actually um, the first person to be uh, arrested for refusing to give up her seat uh, in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, so she was the precursor to Rosa Parks. Um, you know, action of, uh, of of not giving up her seat uh, to a white passenger or at the direction of a white uh, 
a bus driver. Uh, Claudette Colvin was only 15 years old in March of 1955 when she did this. Uh, she was um, uh, a schoolgirl, you know, of course, learning about um, history herself. Uh, she said that she had learned about Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman and, and other uh, women who had been pioneers in freedom and in uh, uh, gaining rights um, for not only women, but, you know, black people in general, and also, um, you know, filling the, you know, the burden of Jim Crow laws at the time. She felt that, you know, felt the need to do something to take a stand of her own. And, and uh, on March 2nd of 1955, uh, she took that stand by sitting down and uh, she even quote uh, said, it felt like Sojourner Truth was on one side pushing me down and Harriet Tubman was on the other side pushing me down. I couldn't get up, end quote. So uh, she was uh, arrested and jailed and actually became one of four women. And it was originally, originally five women, but uh, she became one of four women who went through the entire process of going through uh, the, the, the court, uh, or I'm sorry, the court case, Browder versus Gale and uh, which was used to overturn bus segregation laws in Montgomery uh, and in Alabama. So, um, you know, shout out to Claudette Colvin, um, definitely a, a pioneer and a uh, civil rights uh, 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 hero. Uh, she um, was kind of overlooked. And the reason that this happened is basically because she was a teenager. Um, and then, you know, the NAACP at the time, which Rosa Parks was the secretary for one of the chapters there, um, felt that it was it was needed that they had a person who people could relate to, adults could relate to. So that's why yeah, um, Rosa Parks. I'm sorry. Plus, she was a pregnant teenager. Oh right, right. I, I forgot about that part. Yeah, she was pregnant as well. So it was there was a lot going on that people they felt would. Would, would either frown upon or wouldn't be able to relate to and disconnect from the situation. And so they mm -hmm. felt that the the poster child, quote unquote, um, for that movement, for that bus boycott movement um, was better put on the spotlight on Rosa Parks. Um, but it also still spotlights the fact that um, the, the struggle to end segregation was, you know, definitely uh, a widespread uh, you know, hitting all all aspects of class, of ages, and of gender. So, uh, and you know, most most of that was fought by women. So, we definitely have to recognize that as well. So, um, you know, again, you know, salute to Claudette Colvin for making that stand and, and bringing, uh, helping to bring an end to uh, segregation in the South. Yeah, I think I highlighted her on our on our um, website too. One of our um, faces of her history too. Oh, okay, okay. So you check that out, um, guys. Go to the page, or go to the website, and look up um, Black History Month. The tags, and you'll find the different stuff people you people learn about during Black History Month um, that we posted about previously. Right, um, right, no doubt. Yeah, but that's definitely. I like. I'm glad you shared that story too. Um, so I am yeah, kind also of like. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to say that also pointed out that's also showed the politics within the politics in in the civil rights movement. You know what I mean? The politics with us. You feel me? We had to put the the right face out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We had to hide the truth. You feel me? In order, you know what I mean? The game we had to play. Mm -hmm. you know, right. Like, like Willie said, you know what I mean? They didn't want to put call that COVID out there because they thought it wasn't wouldn't be a good look for us and, or for people right. to, uh, mm -hmm. to 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 gather around. So that also talks about what, even within our own community, we still was judging ourselves harshly back then, or you know what I mean, trying to trying to appease a certain crowd. Right. Like, yeah. Right. It's deep. It's deep. It's deep. No doubt. No doubt. Definitely is. Um, so the person, I'm not really going to highlight them because I'm going to briefly talk about them, but um, the person, I'm going to read a poem. So it's by Melvin Tolson. If you guys don't know who he is, if you watch The Great Debaters, he um, did the Washington, portrayed him. Um, he was a teacher at Wiley College. He was a debate coach. He was um, 
a poet, a, a columnist, and a politician. He basically did a lot for his community, fighting the different um, laws that they were doing with the um, with the farmers and the black farmers, doing all that stuff. So you know, he did a he did a lot during that. But um, he also was a poet, and I found a poem of his that I actually um, really liked, and I wanted to share it with you guys. And you can kind of take from it what you will, but it's called the Dictionary of a Wolf of the Wolf. It says, we declare for liberty, Lincoln said, we use the word and mean all sorts of things. In the sweat of thine face, thou shalt eat bread. Rifle the basket that thy neighbor brings. The grizzled axe man squints at honest Abe. The six feet four of him, gaunt, sad of face, his hands split, um, his hands to split a log or cradle a babe. The cracked palm hat, the homespun of his race. The wolf tear, tears the sheep's throat and the sheep. Extools the shepherd for coddling tyranny. The wolf convulses with indignation deep. Accused the sheep of murder, the shepherd of murdering liberty. But the dictionary of the wolf is writ, and the word the rat of time chews bit by bit. And that was a part of his book called The Harlem Gallery. And it was like a, a book of many poems and different, you know, quotes and things of Melvin Tolstman. But I really liked that poem. I thought it, like, it, I don't know, it just touched me. But, so, 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 you know, I love poetry, so. Yeah, but, uh, I read that one. And he got a couple ones that, you know, you can read and everything. And but what's the name of the book? Like, um, the book the is Harlem called, the, wait a minute, where did it go? It's called The Harlem Gallery. But he has a couple ones, so it's different. Years. Okay, we well, you know what you do with that too. So throw that poem, throw that poem on the website and the uh, the book. The, 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 what the title? Yeah. So if you Definitely, will I post in that if I remember? If I I post it by the end of the night, actually. But it's definitely, uh, cool. like cool. a couple. Of poems. Definitely check them out. That that. So let's touch on a couple of topics, them topics before they, uh, before the fellas call in. Okay. Uh, oh. I know one one thing I wanted to talk to them about. The reason how I came up with this title was uh, making money move. Uh, you know how money moves, making money moves. It's because, you know, growing up, we really wasn't taught. Uh the value of money in our community much as far as I see it. Like we wasn't taught the value of money. We were taught to be consumers more than anything. So mm-hmm. you feel me? We really never learned how money worked. You know what I mean? Not, and, and too many in many of our households we always you know what I mean, we come from really a uh we do not appreciate money, so to speak. You know what I mean? A lot of times our money is spent even before we get it in our community. That's why, you know what I mean, it's that continuous cycle. So, you know, we wasn't never taught about investing, uh, you know, how, how, to me, how many conversations you heard growing up. You know, your parents may have told you to take a bank account, but, you know, many of our friends, I know growing up, their parents want to talk, talk to them about bank accounts, brokerage accounts, you know, these conversations right. was yeah. being had. You know yeah, I mean? like fi- just, just, fi- just doing financial transactions and, fi- you know, learning yeah. about financial, yeah, exactly, financial yeah. literacy in general, yeah. That definitely yeah, wasn't so it, something that was disseminated. Exactly. So growing up, you, you, you feel me, a lot of, a lot of us, we, we've been learning from trial and error. You know what I mean? So we, 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 we make Dumb purchases. You feel me? One thing I learned from watching, uh, from from just life, and from uh, the lady Susie Orman used to she, she used to always say, "If you can't buy it twice, if you can't buy it two, you can't afford it." Mm. You know what I mean? And that's a, right. and that's what a lesson that should be learned early. You know what I mean? Right. Because it would avoid a lot of people going into debt. We wasn't taught about credit. Yeah. How to use yeah. credit. You know what I mean? To 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 uh, make 
make more money or how to use money to make more money. It's like this stuff that we just was never taught that we really had to learn on our own. You know what I mean? You feel me? So that's one of the things, one of the reasons why I came up. You know what I mean? How, uh, you know what I mean? What type of moves y'all make to make your money move? You feel me? Or are you just working just to save money? You know what I mean? Because through my, from my understanding, from my learning, just saving money ain't going to cut it. Yeah, no. that's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, that's that's, that's one Myself. thing that I've learned. Oh, go, go ahead, Sonia. Sorry. No, I say you always got to figure out how to have extra money coming in because you just can't be, like, in this day and age, living check to check is, is, is struggle as it is. You got to find a second income or some type of ongoing income that's always going to come in. Yeah, that perpetual second stream, third stream, fourth stream, if you can. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely, yeah, what I was about definitely. to say is that you know that's 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 one thing. Um, besides, like the having, like I was just about to say, having a second stream of income is 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 finding ways to uh, not only invest your money, but also because, like you said, uh, uh, Clint is like just saving it isn't enough. Uh, I mean, nowadays most most bank accounts don't even give you interest on your money, and even if they do, it's not enough, you know, to do anything with. You know, it's half a percent, one percent. Uh, you know, you're doing good in the stock market if you can do four percent. I think it's four percent or six percent uh, interest uh, gains. Uh, you're doing good. <laughs> you know, when you could do that mm-hmm. once again, not enough money. I mean, because if you think, you know, uh, uh, think about like how much you know four percent of anything is. It's, it's not much. You know, it's definitely not enough to to live on in the future. Uh, but having, like you said, that perpetual income coming in, having money coming in when you're asleep. You know, that's one thing that I, that always attracted me to business and always attracted me to entrepreneurship is is thinking about the fact of having money come in while you're not working. You know, because that, that, that's when you know you're getting ahead or you're you're making strides towards something. Um, one thing that, that I had learned kind of late, but, you know, I ended up learning it regardless, was that I needed to have a good team behind me and I had to have employees who could work when I wasn't working and mm-hmm. um, I had gotten a couple of contracts one time where you know I had uh, uh, negotiated rates that would allow me to pay someone to do the work but I would also be able to retain um, you know uh, 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 some revenue from the or not revenue but you know retain profit from the revenue that mm-hmm. I gained from the contract while being able to pay the the second person or third person and um, you know being able to have those people at you know at one location working while I was at another location I had a a contract once where it was me and two other guys where we all three of us were working and not only did all three of us get paid but I had money to put in the bank for the company as well so you know that right there was able to not only just sustain because I was paying myself but also to save for the company and and progress the business and improve things for you know my employees and all that. So you know that's that's essential. Being able to um, make money when you're not even working or when you're not even woke. <laughs> you know, um, you know, having online business or having sales. You know, uh, 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 sales that are offline. You know, where you don't have to worry about somebody. Uh, coming to you to to get the product, you know, you just have them. They they go to a website or they go to your to your storefront and they purchase, and the money is being made. And you could be at home, you could be on vacation, whatever the case may be, and continue to to make revenue. Yeah, that's definitely where I feel. I feel like we need, like as far as with the podcast, that's our our goal to be able to make it make. Um, it's fun to do it, but to make it make sense. And as far as money wise, could be you shelling out, constantly shelling out, you're not putting back in. So it's that it's that that fulfillment that what you're doing is making money in itself. You know, a lot of people make money off the podcast, a lot of people make money doing different things that they're doing, but it's always dope to um see that come back and like see that what you're doing is progressing to that level. Mhm. One thing I learned about about business is any business 
reasons, anybody that whoever did anything, sold anything, hustled, they would, you know, sometimes, you know what I mean, the money ain't going to come as fast as you think it's going to come sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with anything, you probably going to shell out more up front, you know what I mean, hoping that return come back. You know what I mean? Because sometimes, you know, that's what that, that's basically how, you know what I mean, making money move to make money moves. Sometimes you have to put out to get back. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You feel me? That, from from all, so sometimes you, I remember Dane Dash was saying, and, and a couple of his interviews, like, you know what I mean? I put up all my money. I put up all, I put everything in, and sometimes it costs me everything. But I know on the back end, I'm going to get more back. You feel me? And that's sort of like this. The more we put in, we, you know what I mean, we're going to have to shell out. Because, you know, what they say, uh, Willie, most businesses fail within the first five years. Yeah, sometimes you know even I mean? faster. <laughs> yeah, even faster. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it ain't no, this ain't for the week. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? This ain't for the week. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, only the strong survive, and sometimes the strongest ones that survive is the ones who are willing to put in that money, put in that extra effort. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Right, exactly, exactly. And I mean, your 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 point is is huge, Clint, because you know, I mean, like I've been seeing some of those posts lately of people saying that too, and it, it it's it, it makes me you know happy that people are being real because you know a lot of times. You see people out here stunting. You see people out here, you know, trying to, mm-hmm. you know, make light of 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 an entrepreneur entrepreneur's life in terms of you know how how the money comes in or how how the success comes, and you know it, it's good to see people being real and saying, hey, you know what, this this life is not for everybody because sometimes it's going to be ups and sometimes it's going to be downs and it's going to be a lot more downs than ups. You know, I mean, I I remember one year. I was doing okay, right? And I would say oh, I was well, making... Hold on, not to cut you off. I'm sorry, Will, not to cut you off. I think uh, the caller's on the line. The brother's on the line. I'm sorry, Will. I'm rapping hold Joe on, in the building. What's happening? <laughs> What's, <good? laughs> What's going hey, on, guys. fellas? Welcome, What's going brothers. On? Welcome. Appreciate hey, you. I really like that conversation that was going on right there. I was adding yeah. a little bit. <laughs> hey, 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 you know what? For, first of all, first of all, let's 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 let, allow y'all to introduce yourselves. Let the people yes. know who y'all are. You know what I mean? Go ahead. First off, right. first off, we'd like to thank y'all for having us. Yes, you're welcome, my brother. Definitely. You're welcome. Thank y'all for coming on. Yes. Yeah, so this is yes, thank y'all. Partners, Phil Stacks, Phil Stacks, and it's rapping dope. Talk about it. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. Now, now check. One of the reasons I wanted these brothers to come on the show is because they like like he like he said he's loving the conversation. This is basically what their podcast is about. Their show is about. You know what I mean? Financial literacy, uh, financial education. You feel me? I was uh, I, I wanted. To, Y'all to jump right on in real quick because I was listening to one of y'all shows or watching it on YouTube, and mm-hmm. and uh, you, yeah, you already know. And I believe the brother Don Bucks, he was because we was talking about uh, making money moves. We was talking about investing and how to invest, mm-hmm. and he was breaking it down about the dividend stocks. I got a couple yes. of dividend stocks myself. You know what I mean? Stuff. You feel me? So. If, if you can, I want you to elaborate on that episode or or, or, or on that conversation y'all was having. Um, and what and what part of the, what part of the conversation? Because I think I, I danced on that for a little bit. Um, I think I was talking about how you can one one of the topics we was talking about is how to um, use your dividends eventually to start paying for some of your bills. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That right there. How, how how you can use that money to uh, make more money or use it in you know this this I forget how you would, or just break it, the whole process down how the dividend stocks work basically. 
Okay, so basically, like what we want to do is we we don't want to promote getting rich quick, right? Mm-hmm. Because uh, a lot of times in our in our culture, you know, with people that look like us, you know, they always it seems like there's an ongoing narrative that you know um, all money must come fast, mm-hmm. and you know, it's not totally our, it's not totally our culture fault. You know, that's the, the times we live in. Like everything is fast. You know what I'm saying? We want our phones fast. Like we want our internet fast. You know what I'm saying? So we want. It's like our people want our money fast too. But that's not how. You know, if you look at it, you do some research and you look up millionaires and successful people that they built their wealth over time. So when I'm talking about dividends, I'm talking about. You know, possibly, you know, building your building your portfolio one share at a time, and eventually, you can start um, because you get paid. What a lot of people don't know is with stocks, like you're buying a piece of a company, so mm-hmm. therefore you start participating in the profits, and that is in the form of a dividend. So with each share you buy, each company pays a different percentage, whether it be monthly, quarterly every six months, every year. So let's say you have, for instance, a company that pays a dividend uh, every month. You can pretty much uh, do the math on it and figure out, let's say, let's take a $100 phone bill, for example. You can pretty much divide, you know, let's say that a company pays you $0.10 per share every month. You pretty much divide your phone bill by $0.10 which is that's what you're going to get per share, you, you'll be able to uh, figure out how many shares of that particular company you need in order for it to pay your $100 phone bill. Oh. And that's simple math. So, you know, just divide 100 by 10 cents. And what do you get? You can do that math, you can do that math right quick. Exactly. That's all. See, and that's my thing right there. We're not taught to talk like when I started to show off with. We're not taught to think like that. In our Actually, exactly, exactly. Um, and it's, you know, it's by design. It goes way, goes way back. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't really want us to know this stuff. Um, you know, that's how and the country is designed. What's deeper exactly. than that, though? What's the, the deeper part than that? Not only are we not taught to think like that, when we, when, when you in high school and you about to graduate. Them little four years, you're not taught to move like that. You taught to right. mm-hmm. hit the ground running, find a job. You ain't taught to be a leader. You're taught to be a follower. You, <laughs> that's a fact. You're yeah, taught to true. help somebody else keep their jaw on the float, help another corporation become a 500 fortune company. Yeah, yeah. We, definitely made, we definitely made Apple its first trillion dollar company. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, how, how yeah. many of us got More importantly, hold up. More, <laughs> more importantly, we made Louisiana that chicken sandwich. We made that sandwich popular overnight. <laughs> more right. importantly, as a culture, right. as a mm-hmm. unit, and that's mm-hmm. and that's what that's what we try to drop as a unit. Do you see the power in what we can do and and, and accomplish as one? Sticking yeah, together now. on a positive note. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, now you bring that up, right? Now I want to get into another show y'all was talking about. Uh, like the, the slick Rick, you know what I mean? Faking it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? In the hood. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That was you know, y'all was talking about. Oh, brother, you went all the way back. That was a very first go. episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fake it till yeah. you make it. Fake it. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Figure it till you make it. Now, now, my thing is, because I was listening to that conversation, part one and part two, and I'm like, you feel me? Most of it, most of that is because, like, like, like we were saying, we're not taught like that. We're taught to be consumers. You feel right, me? Yeah. So, right, yeah. so the first thing we want to do, because y'all, because y'all was mentioning, like, you say, damn, you know, dude got a Benz, but he in a project. That's right. the one that you use, or, or or dude got the Gucci slippers on, but he had the bus stop or whatever. You feel me? Got right. the yeah. shoes on, but he had the right. bus stop. You feel me? Right. We think because we're thought we're not taught the value of money. You know what I mean? We're taught to look good instead of be good. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 But you know what? You know. 
where we go where ahead, we talk that though? Where do you think that narrative comes from? Oh well, TV, uh, popular culture, uh, the powers that be, really, because when you, like you said, the educational system isn't set up for us. They don't want everybody to be rich. They don't want everybody. Mm-hmm. They need the working class. They need the poor. You feel me? That's yeah. how the capitalist society going to thrive, because because you need the poor. You feel mm-hmm. me? So in order for us, so in order for them to thrive, they have to keep us thinking. Well, we got to keep spending. We got to keep spending. You know what I mean? Not knowing. Oh, yeah. We we taught the the, the want to be the the best at all times. You we we taught the want to be number one. We taught the want to be him. We taught the want to be her. When it ain't mm-hmm. that, it's not. It ain't really that. Right. Well, like you were saying about popular culture and what's, you know, the powers that be, you know, what they want, our, they, they, like they shape our narrative for us and we be all for it. We eat it up, right? Eat it up. Snatch it. Like, um, one, one of my posts that I put up about that in regards to, uh, you know, how we watch TV and we, we like to, uh, I, I guess, imitate what we see on TV. <clears throat> but one, one key thing we got to look at um, like Lamborghini. Yeah. When was the last time you seen a Lamborghini commercial? Never. Yeah, they don't Never. have certain much. Yeah. Their target audience, their target customer, don't watch TV that long to see commercials. Right. Yeah. They mm. conventions right. And, and business meetings and stuff. Right. They don't. Whereas though we we all in front of the TV, we want we wondering who shot ghosts all day long. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I mean, I ain't got nothing yeah. against power. I like power. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not I'm not overly consumed with, you know, I used to be, because I was part of that. You know what I'm saying? So I can't even knock it. I understand it. You know what I'm saying? But it comes a time when you got to. Uh, all right, guys. Yeah, prioritize. Yeah, prioritize. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's part of yeah. growing up or just becoming more conscious. I don't it's know. It's, no, it's I think I, I th- it's yeah, a exactly. I was to say, I think it's a mindset where you have to you it's have to really mi- sit back and realize what's most important in your life and what's important for your family. Everything is a mindset. What we teach is a mindset, and it's just you know, um, and thing and is access like, to information. Access to information, I can go with that. Yeah, true. Because yeah, it's, because it's, it's a lot of because a lot when I when I think I think now with the with the a lot more act like we talked about on here before a lot of information out here is bullshit information so you got to sift through it too. But with, mm-hmm. with you know we're mm-hmm. in the information we're in the information age so now you feel me inquiring minds like everybody on this every everybody on this phone on this line has an inquirer in mind, or else we wouldn't even be here doing the things we do. Right. You know what I mean? Seeking the type of information we need. You feel me? So so back in the day, like, I, re- I remember vividly, you know, El Joe, he, he know my grandma. You feel me? My great-grandma. God bless her. You feel me? But I remember sitting down, watching, uh, it could have been CNN, C-SPAN, whatever one of them, uh, the shows where, you know, they got the stock market, all the information going across the streams. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They talking. And, and I remember vividly C-Spay. sitting there. Yeah, C-SPAN, yeah. So I'm really sitting there looking at it with her. And I'm like, I'm like, man, they speak in English. But I don't understand the damn thing they saying. You know what I mean? And she just laughs. She laughs. You feel me? Now, mind you, she probably was in, at this time, she probably was in her 80s. And she laughed too. This is one of the smartest women I know. She's like, baby, I don't know neither. You feel me? See, it was, mm-hmm. was kind of bittersweet. It was kind of bittersweet in a good moment for me, though, because it, it showed me, like, damn, you know what I mean? This is the type of shit we need to be, to be that too. Yeah, this is the type of shit well, I need, yeah. So now it's up to me because, you know, the previous generations, they 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 either didn't have access limited access or wasn't even a, in the right mind to even think about. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, like you know I mean? in my family growing up, my um, grandma was the only person in my family on both sides to own a house. Mm. And 
she owned her house outright. Um, she was just paying taxes on it. And like that was her only that was like, you know how you have in the in the black community and the family you had that family house. That was a that was our family house. Like it wasn't right. rented, that was bought. And mm-hmm. she didn't, you didn't really understand what what it meant to buy a house and like me and my sister, we bought houses. I bought mine this last year. She bought hers a couple of years before she sold me mine. But it's just like you, 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 you don't get that mindset of owning the house because everywhere I grew up at, people didn't own their houses. They rented. it. They rented houses for years. It wasn't like right. they actually owned right. it. Mm-hmm. And you taught those types of things. You don't understand what it is to do it for yourself. But as you said, we live in information information station. Um, information mm-hmm. like world right now, so where we 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 are able to l- learn these type of things. Like I didn't know nothing about credit. I didn't have credit. I had to learn all about that. I had to learn how to build credit. I had to do those things. But that's because me wanting to know, me getting tired of paying somebody else's mortgage and then realizing what's what's actually happening. You're paying somebody's mortgage. You're actually, you're not even paying him. You're not even paying him. Like you barely like. What you're giving them is, is pocket money. Like their like their stuff is they probably bought that house outright and just paying like a couple dollars on taxes, not even that much. But you breaking your neck to live in somebody's house and then when you try to move bigger, you're paying more money out your pocket to not own something. It was like you, when you think about those things and you like yes, um stepping Make out money. entrepreneurship, any um owning a home or anything that just involves you doing it or, you know, you stepping out a leap of faith. You, you have to learn, you have to educate yourself what you're walking into because you don't know. But we're not taught that. We're not, um, like I said, like, like you said, back when we grew up, it was just getting by. People were struggling for us to get by. Like our parents did what they had to do to make sure we got by. It was never, and it's not, I don't want to blame them because they probably weren't taught. But see, so it's layers we, to this thing. We, we all grew up on survival there's so many layers to this thing. I mean, to you, to you, to your point, you was talking about information being so available to us now, right? Um, it's it's like so much information. I believe is taken for granted. Mm-hmm. Like we can Google anything and become a master. We can YouTube anything, pretty much anything, and learn whatever we want to learn. Right? It's so we have so much information that's available to us. I, I believe that, you know, amongst other things, like we just take it for granted. Like um, I was talking to somebody, it's like people still ask questions. Like you, it's not wrong with asking questions, you know, have some social interaction, but like a person will ask you something that they can simply Google. Mm-hmm, right. mm-hmm. It's like we're not, we not taking advantage of, you know, how readily – information is available because back in the day like I'm aging myself but we had encyclopedias yeah have all <laughs> I mean if you, was, if you was fortunate enough to have encyclopedias like um, and right. you had to wait, you had, to wait to go to school to, to do some work yeah you had, to, you had to look up stuff like literally look up stuff you had to go to the library right. look mm-hmm. the, uh, the cards the little cards what was that called mm-hmm. the Dewey Decimal System and, that, and all yeah <laughs> Like, yeah, you know I'm saying, like, this is where I came from. But now all this stuff is so readily available, I believe, is taking right there. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it just spills over into other areas of, of our lives. And they um, still lazy. To the young lady's point, as far as um, that house and your family, um, I believe, you know, as generations, um, you know, we come come down generations. We got further and further away from um, the value, having knowing the value of ownership mm-hmm. of having our own. So now that's why you said you have people just renting houses because it's you know immediate gratification. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Information mm-hmm. that that whole part where she said about the information. The information is actually what led me to buy a house. You know, mm-hmm. people, I ain't even gonna hold you. A black person would sit there and tell themselves all day, "I can't afford that. I can't afford that." Then you got that black person that's gonna live above their means and be struggling, living check to check, can't barely hold it, but they want this big old, you know what I'm saying? 
But mm-hmm. the information is what, because I said that. I said, hold up, man. Like, it, it, I'm tired of this landlord stuff and all this. And I did the research and called around and did this, did that. Man, look, me and my girl, we brought a crib in 30 days. And it was crazy because I was in a situation where I moved into a crib. And within six months, I'm getting all these letters on the door, basically, that the house is in foreclosure. Mm. Owner ain't even tell you, huh? Right. And by oh, wow. law, she doesn't have to tell. By law, they don't have to tell you. So, mm. now, mm-hmm. we're fine. I but, man, I ain't even going to hold you. I went and got a lawyer and anything. I wasn't playing. So, I put all of her money in the escrow account. Basically, I stayed there for eight months for free because... I wasn't moving nowhere. So what I was doing was looking around for houses. <laughs> oh, I wow. looked at 17 properties to rent. And then it dawned on me. Why why keep going through this? Let's buy a house. Right. After, but after 17 properties now, like, I want to smack myself in the face. Like, <laughs> but, but, sure. But it was the information. I said, hold up. Like, it was just the process. Sometimes you're not, or, or sometimes you don't know how smart and how strong you are until you're put in a position to where you got to be as strong as you ever right. been. And mm-hmm. you got to think as hard as you ever would. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Facts. 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 For real. I, wanna, I wanted to, because uh, you also <laughs> said something. You said one word that, that that's key in all this, too. Lazy. Yeah. A lot that's, in our community, you feel me? Laziness is, and I'm not just talking about laziness in the physical. I'm talking about laziness in thought, laziness right. in action as as yeah. well. Because because like the brother said, sometimes like laziness in thought, some of the stuff that we're we're, we're questioning, we could just look up for ourselves. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Right? Then when we get that. Then a lot of times when we get information, we we, we procrastinate. We procrastinate mm-hmm. and then and the yeah. time go go on and then you miss an opportunity and then once you miss your opportunity now you got excuses. Well, the only excuse you really should have had was you just didn't put the you know what I mean the foot to the pavement. We just didn't right, put the word out. Right, it 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 up. Up. Yeah. We right. are yeah. the only ones that could stop us. We, I think we I, are the yeah. only ones that could stop us. Because like Sonny said, said, said I, oh no, like Sonny said with the houses, you feel me? Even even with that, I'm going to show you laziness in that. My grandma owned the house over there. My grandpa owned the house. Now, a whole bunch of kids on both sides, everybody has an example of owning a house. Mm. How many of them kids you really think came out and owned the house. You yeah. me? My uh-huh. grandfather had seven kids. Uh-huh. My grandfather had, my grandma, great-grandmother had about four. Only one of them owned the house. Only two of my, uh-huh. uh, on uh, on my on my dad's side, only two of them owned a house. They uh-huh. take for granted, and they was lazy. You feel me? Yeah. And, 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 they, then, and they caught up in that same uh, mindset that, of rent, rent, rent. They scared. And what bothers me about that is when my father got sick, they allowed they somehow they allowed to to lose they, they caused her to lose her house. Mind you, she owned it outright. You were just paying taxes. And if you break down the taxes monthly, like it's not that serious. So right. the laziness and the people that lived with her that were not really paying rent, you couldn't pay taxes. Sometimes the house house. commitment. Yeah, my grandpa had that same situation. Yeah, I, I know a lot of my people, family. People get houses like that. <laughs> Yo, yeah. my, uncles, my uncles lost my grandpa's house like that. He passed yeah. away and left that house to them, and all they had to do was pay the taxes. Pay the taxes, yep. That, they that's, couldn't even do that. Sure. That's basically what the situation I was in. They were backed up on taxes and come to find out the husband caught the wife cheating in the house with a black dude. So oh, he said, shit. yeah, yo, I'm telling you, I went to the neighbor. The neighbor was cool. The neighbor volunteered the information to me and everything and basically the husband didn't pay the back taxes. The house, it wow. was 
in foreclosure four times within two years, yo. And that's sad because right. that like, exactly. that's what bothers me. I hope and pray to God that my daughter does right because this house is for her and her brother. So I'm hoping that yeah. I'm, I'm preparing everything I'm already doing is preparing them to be okay. You're talking about pension, right. 401k, all the stuff, life insurance and all that. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm about to that's in that insurance that you get in case you pass and it helps to pay the mortgage. I'm I'm about to and do that thing, too. And, a, and another thing we have to do in our community too is 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 make wills. Yes. Mm, mm-hmm. Make yes, life exactly. wills. Exactly. Uh, life, life insurance, insurance. bills. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Up. Up. Man, you screaming life insurance. I want to add the man. We got people that don't even have health insurance. Health insurance. No, you're right. You, you yeah. are right. But at the same time, I thought you could get you could get fined and penalized for not having health insurance. As far as I understood, you can't. Yeah, you know. No, it's not. I know how that. Works. Well, that was that, yeah. That was that. Yeah, they that was one of the things they got rid of uh, when they got rid of yeah, uh, got part rid of the of Obamacare. But yeah, Ob- Obamacare is what introduced that for for a little short mm-hmm. time there. Oh okay. oh okay. I mean, cause I, I mean, I got health insurance. I mean, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, but I've I've been down that road because everybody can't afford it. Like sometimes you go through hard times, but people have to understand and know the information and programs that are readily available to them. I.e., yeah. the county. You understand me? Like, yeah. <laughs> they gotta <laughs> understand and know, like. You feel me? Like you ain't gotta be working to get insurance. Like you just you have to do your research. Man, you feel me? Sure. I said people uh, they want immediate gratification. Seems like I don't know. We we got a, a generation of like grown up kids. And amen, amen. True that. You know, True that. Kids, it's like they don't really want. They want everything handed to them. I I, I read this uh, post the other day. They said. You pray, you pray, for, uh, you pray to God for some cake, right? But as soon as God hand you the batter, the eggs, the pot, and the oven, you get mad and walk out the kitchen, right? Yeah. Like, right. Like you just That's pray for cake. You just, gave you the, just gave you the mixture for the cake, but you don't even want to make the cake. You yeah. want somebody to make the cake for you. Spare the lazy. Don't want to do the work. So it's just like, you know. The challenge, man. This stuff is heavily ingrained, man, and you know that's we we just trying to do our part to change that narrative and um, you know get people hope they know they can because you know I've just I was just fortunate enough to um, I came up in the family business. I worked with my dad, still worked with my dad uh, for about twenty five years, so I never really had a boss. You know what I'm saying? But one of my qualms was, you know, when I'm scrolling through social, I see, you know, people showing off their stuff and, you know, uh, showing off their fancy cars and stuff. But I'm like, I've never seen nobody show somebody how to get it. Mm-hmm. So that was one of my goals. I said, you know what, I'm going to start promoting business and asset acquirement because I'm tired of seeing people showing their stuff. I'm, 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 I'm trying to show people how to get it. Yeah, a lot of people don't want to share information because because they don't want people to one up them. And that's and, and that's, that's, and that's a big that's really a big thing with the, the young, you know, like the young generation. Nobody's mm-hmm. guiding them. Nobody's guiding that young generation. That's that's why they wild. So, you know, if we can give them something to focus on and keep them busy, to where they can plan Sunny their future. Said. Back. I want to hear uh-huh. what said. What you just say? What happened? That's funny. What did I say? Yeah, you said something about one up. Like how he said he wanted to. He saw people showcasing what their their accomplishments were, compliments were, or things like their business and blah blah blah. But when it came to somebody trying to ask them how they do that or how to, they don't want to do that because it's it's, it's a fear of competition. Oh. Oh like, yeah. 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 Say, I, 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 it's like, yeah, I'm doing that too, but how do you do it? Like, it just gives me advice how to do it. I'm not trying to take your business. Like, we, 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 we both can do it the same way. We do it different ways, you know? But it's right, that. Some right. people make sure that they're not willing to help out because they, they, don't, they, don't want you, they don't want you to surpass them. 
Yeah, I'm not with yeah, that. Every, so it's enough for everybody, and I and you right. operating with that mindset. You don't know. You don't know money. You don't know wealth. Yeah. Like it's so much. Yeah. Right, it's exactly. For everybody. Exactly. That, that's I'm a photo- they like I'm, I'm a graphic designer, and I get people like photographers and graphic designers be asking me, "Hey, yo, how you do that?" And you know, if, if it's something simple, I tell them, or if it's a way that I could send them a link to show them like similar to right. something or something like that, I try to do that. You feel me? Like it's money out here. Everybody gonna have their unique style, and that's the difference. That's it. Yeah. Each one, each one teach one. Each one teach one. Right. Exactly. Talk about we do podcasts and everybody does their podcast differently. Not no two people have the same exact podcast. It's 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 chemistry. It's different things that make you unique. So while right. we eating, we can show y'all how to eat too. And even though y'all like, and it's like how you guys are on our podcast today. You're promoting, we're promoting you guys, and at the same time, it's it's bringing your fans to us and our fans to you. So it's like mm-hmm. a dual. Right. But it's it's all in love. Mm-hmm. Some people as competition. Like I don't want to go in there because then you're gonna not like it's not that. Like a lot of people treat mm-hmm. it as a competitive. It's not that serious. Right. Is mm-hmm. that is that you think that's in our community? Or you think that's just people in general? Because I I'll think that's people, people in general. Yeah, that's I, I, I see it happen in all in, in all in races, all communities, all levels of income. Because yeah. you know, people you feel like it's some competition it. out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. We're I just saying. Saying. yeah, I, I can't. I can't respect that. I can't respect that, man. Um, no, because you know. You see what I did? <laughs> Look, I'm just, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just not that kind of person. That's why. You yeah, know, yeah. right. Not that kind of person. Like I'm. I'm I, I, it's, it's no fun being successful by yourself, man. That's right. I want yeah. to talk to you. Tell me, like, I don't know. Yeah, people like, that like think the brother like said, that is scared of growth. That's that's the only thing that really could happen is is positive growth. Your fans meet my exactly. fans, my world meets right. your world. That's right. just, huh? Yeah. That's I wanted to tell them something. Come to my mind. They on the line. I wanted to, I wanted to touch something with uh, on, on what the brother said about how he grew up working with his father, how he never had a boss. That's how right. I started working. You feel me? My my, right. my cousin Punk and he was a plumber. He was, used to work for Roto Rooter. Then he started getting his own plumbing business, his own cons, okay. and he started branching off, started doing his own thing, and he needed help. So I was mm. like, when I first started with him, I was like twelve. You feel me? So that was my first taste. He wasn't showing my first taste, even though he was paying me. That wasn't the payoff. The payoff was, was with me was to see how he ran it, see how he got clients, you know what I right. mean? See see how he built his business, you mm-hmm. feel me? And see and and, and and to have that vision of, oh, he working for himself. Because now mm-hmm. he had got to the point to where he, wa- he wasn't even working for roto Rooter no more. He was strictly making money. Just He had his own truck doing his own thing. You know what I mean? And so that was my first int- introduction into, okay, boom, it's a possibility for me to run my own business and do my own thing <laughs> and be successful. The fact that That's they always, that, 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 uh, broke that, that vision that they give us of what a plumber is, is not what I seen. Mm-hmm. I seen a businessman. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I seen right. a businessman. So that taught me, even when I went and got regular jobs, Always knew, like, nah, I gotta do something on my own. You feel me? Always had that and, spirit. And I, I don't feel have like if more it, of us do that in that community. We'll all do it. Yeah. Like, you, we talk, we talk entrepreneurship, but I have nothing against a job because you got to start somewhere. Oh, yeah. But I'm, to, to your point, um, that's dope. What you did as far as work when you was working for him, you, you was learning, you know how he did things. So my my take on a job is work on that work at that job right mm-hmm. and if you like it if you like what you're doing learn how they do it mm-hmm. so you can in turn take that knowledge and go start your own thing mm-hmm. right that's just right. that's just how i'm thinking because you know some people are just comfortable they don't, they don't want to put 
you know, because when you're an entrepreneur, like, uh, you know, it's not all peaches and cream all the time. So um, a lot of people don't want to take responsibility for their income. Like, they they know they can go to work and do bare minimum and still get a check, right? Yep. Versus, you know, like me personally, we have a barbershop. Like, I don't get no weekly check for just going to the barbershop. Like, if I don't cut any mm-hmm. hair, I don't make any money. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, exactly. So so that, that thought process, I learned that early, that you have to... You know, depending on what kind of business you are, you got to be you, your boss. So if you want to raise, you like you want to raise, go out and get some customers. Like go wear your barber jacket, mm-hmm. on your lunch break, <laughs> go to you know wherever you go out to eat, and like advertise yourself. Because don't nobody mm-hmm. want to do business with, with nobody they don't like, first of all, <clears throat> or that they don't know. Yeah. So you want to raise. You know, I, I, I learned it early. Like I want to raise, I go get my raise. Like right. So. Oh, yeah, you know, but that's that's a whole other mindset that a lot of people are not, you know, first off familiar with. But then, you know, once they get the idea, they like, ooh, some people are scared of that because they like, ooh, it's, I don't have nobody to blame but myself mm-hmm. for my success or like it's a mindset. Yeah, 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 definitely. But you know what I'm saying? It's curious. just like, just yeah. But just, hey, say for instance, just like with my business, I. Provide. I got a mortgage. I provide for a family off of my photography business. Right. Yeah. I, mean, when I I go hard. Like it, man. Listen. Logos, flyers, backdrops, business cards, whatever you need. Photo shoots, video. I but, taught myself. I'm to get you up from the um prom, but you know. We'll but, talk. You know, <laughs> I bet. Which what she said? Oh no, nah, I talked uh, about a prom. But oh, I mean, okay. I taught myself everything. It was like I sat back, I did some research for a couple of years, and then boom, all these things happened. And you know, I ended up being a photographer. Long story short, but stacks, but stacks. Uh-huh. Not to cut you off, you didn't like something happened. Like like you said earlier, sometimes people don't move <laughs> out on thoughts and things until they until they have to, like until something really right. hits some shit, really hits the fan exactly. and, and you have to. So, mm-hmm. you know, talk about that because it's not like you just said you up and said, you know what, I want to start my own business. You, your back was against the wall, right? Well, I mean, yeah, right. Well, I mean, you know, I was, I was working at a job and I was there basically for 12 years. And I was that guy there. You feel me? I went from, and I mean, I made history at this job. I went from a trainee to a team leader in 60 days. Then from 60 days to, I'm going to say about four to six months, I made supervisor. Boom. Oh, wow. Only one in history. Nobody ever did it like that. I got promoted about five times at this job. I ended up being like a, uh, a workforce manager at this job. Now, all of a sudden, out of the blue, this lady gets hired, this lady named Donna. She gets hired, and she's friends with the with my boss. Now, she comes in. She keeps trying to change all of this stuff. Now, I was that guy. Like, I loved my job. So when you love something, you, you give it a 1,000%. And I was brave. I was, just, I was that guy. Anybody who worked there, they knew, look, give it to Lamont. Lamont will get it done. I got it done. Boom. But this lady comes in. She tried to change all of this shit. We end up button heads. And you know what I'm saying? And it just didn't look good. She came after my job. And things happened to where I end up stepping down. And it was cool, but I really wanted out because me and her kept butting heads and she, you know, coming from my job and then people that work close with me taking her side, trying to set me up, you know what I'm oh, saying? Wow. And a lot of people like me, so I'm getting all this information and I'm putting these pieces together and it's just too crazy. It's too much for me. Like, it was almost, mm-hmm. nah, it's just too much, you know what I mean, for me to go through for that. So. I had all of this training and all these certificates that I went 
you know, they sent me basically the classes for management, for uh, managing employees and um, um, just running a successful business and, you know, communication and leadership. I took all these courses. Yo, I'm a, I passed them all with flying colors, like personality mm-hmm. or good, like whatever. But my back was against the wall, and I decided to step down. When I stepped down, I was a regular employee. I ain't like how they was doing a regular employee. So, you know, I end up having a baby and living in, basically living in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Because when I had my baby, I took six weeks off. I'm bonding with the baby taking pictures, posting it online, and people liking the pictures. So, you know, a couple people was like, yo, you you should should think about photography and blah, blah, blah. So a couple months down the line, I'm buying a camera and went to go see Kyler one day in the studio. And he like, yo, they got the studio next door. And I'm like, yo, I lost my job. And you know what I mean? Boom, boom, boom. Then my girl ended up, me and her ended up breaking up. So it got real deep. So I ended up having mm-hmm. to get that studio because it made sense. He like, nah, get the studio. So I got the studio, you know, paid for the studio or whatever, you know, and, and it was like, it was crazy. But everything fell into place. So I'm in the studio and I'm going to work every day, coming back, boom, boom, at first. Then I just quit. Mm. So now, you feel me? Now, at the time when I quit, I had my business for like five or six months. So I was, repl- I think only 30% of my income was replaced at the time. Wow. So I ain't had no choice but to get it popping. So my girl dropped my son off to me every morning before she go to work. So, you know, you ain't working, you watching one of them type things. So I'm taking him with me. He got the camera around his neck. We walking downtown, <laughs> you know, <laughs> moting, handing out business cards. Oh, I'm, t- you know, I'm, I, I mean, I hit the ground running. And that's what I mean. Like a lot of people, that's what I mean. Like you, something happened. Whereas though it made you have to, like you, the job right. was, was, the job was taking Free. you back and you're like, you know what? Like, I ain't got to put up with this. Like, but mm-hmm. some people are haven't experienced nothing like that too, because sometimes that's what it takes. Like you know, some people are not you know go getters like that, and you know thinking business minded, right? And, and then something like that happens, they have to like, and that's with anything in life. Like you're not going to change anything in your life until you're fed up with something. It's right. a lot of people that know my story and watch me. Turn, turn turn this into a successful outcome. A lot of people. It's a lot of people that work at ACS or Xerox to this day, and they know what happened. They watched it happen, and look at me now. I'm better off. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm better off. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's the biggest thing. Is sometimes it takes that better off situation to to realize that you know you needed to make that move. And I think a lot of people they're afraid to make that move. But like you said, it sometimes is. you may need you may need that that being you know having your back to the wall, or you may need that push, you know, uh, whatever it may take. I mean, I know for me when I started one of my businesses, um, it was it was at a time when I was kind of in the same situation where I w- wasn't getting either the respect or the 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 looks that I felt like I should be getting at work. I was doing mm-hmm. you know, big things but wasn't getting recognition. Or when I did get recognition, it was, you know, immediately sidelined or, or, or minimized. And so mm-hmm. I felt like, you know what, the only way I'm going to do something bigger with my life, the only way I'm going to get um, ahead in life is if I just do it myself. And and, and I mm-hmm. stepped out on faith and decided to just say, you know what, I'm, uh, I got the skills, I, I, got the, I got the time, I can make the investment in right. myself. And you know, let me right. just go out there and do it. And I, like you said, I, I got, I, I got it to a point where I was paying bills, was taking care of the family, and you know, mm-hmm. on my thing. You know, I had, I had a good income coming in from the, uh, 
from the business and it just you know it was just flowing and so you know sometimes you just got to take a step you know take take that step yeah. step out on faith you know like you said not not be afraid and fearful of what might come i mean fail failure can can happen failure thing you know it, not everybody's going to have that result you know I, I've, I've been in business several times and a couple of my businesses didn't work you know, I didn't make any money or I made money, but it wasn't enough, you know, to keep it going. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes you go through that, you know, you learn your lesson, you take your notes, you know, and you, say, you know what, now I know what I did wrong or now I know what didn't go right or or maybe I didn't, you know, plan for this, whatever the case may be. Uh, sometimes, you know, it, it may not be what you didn't do. It just may not have been the right market or it might not have been the right time. So you just got to you know, you know what you know what the best part of my story is? And, and I mean, the best part of my story is that during that time I was there, this guy pulled me to the side, and he said, two years in, you know what a 401K is? Go look that up and come back and tell me what it is. Now, mind you, I'm a supervisor. I'm two years in, and he's a manager. So I went, looked it up, did all my research, and I'm psyched up to come back and tell him about what it is. Nah, and, about that other story, Stax. Huh? That other story. Like oh, the, yeah. Oh, 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 oh that's the audience that's, that we're dealing with. Uh, immediately right after. All right, go So, ahead. yeah, so so basically he, he, you know, I come back to him, I tell him what the 401K is, 401K is, he's like, all right, listen, I want you to get one. So... I'm like, okay, how do I do that? So he tells me how to do it. Now, this is the mindset that we're trying. I'm trying to put the people in. Like, this is what happened to me. Somebody came mm-hmm. to me and dropped the jewel right in front of me, and I just, instead of pussyfooting and bullcrap, I just said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this. Took it, yeah. did it, went all the way with it. And I'm talking about 12 years later. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like when I when I when I left that job, now he taught me to forget about it. You sign up for it. Mm-hmm. I was I think I was dumping like a hundred and something, and they was matching me hundred and something, whatever. I ended up with leaving there seventy five thousand dollars in a four hundred one k. Now mm-hmm. mind you, I had so forgot that's... about that. I forgot oh, about wow. it, and then I and then my girl like, yo, you got a letter here, so she bring it to the studio. Now, mind you, only 30% of my income is being, you know, subsidized or whatever. And I'm like, all right, boom. So I got to get out here and make this. I got to see, you know, I got to make do this and do that. I got some savings, got a couple in the checking. I got to do what I got to do. You feel me? But I get that letter, and I'm like, oh, oh, that's dope. Forgot about that. And then, you know, that that's what we trying to we you know, want to talk you know what about I got? all types of investments, man. Mm-hmm. Legacy, you know what I got from that story? You know what I got from that story? It's, it's, I don't know if y'all ever heard the saying of, and the same thing with Willie, and I, and the same thing with my situation, <coughs> uh, burn the boats. I don't know if it, mm-hmm. uh, nah, I, mean, I don't know if y'all ever heard that saying. It was from the <laughs> World War II. It's like when they was going up, the, uh, when the boats was coming, the uh, soldiers were scared. You feel me? But uh-huh. the general was like, listen, get out here. We burn that boat. So we, either we're going to go up that hill or we're just going to die right here. You feel me? Right. Y'all make a choice. Uh-huh. You feel me? And that's I, and when you get to that, that's the situation I was in. You know, I, I talked about my story on here a couple of times. You know, I, I, you know, I, got, I went on disability. I, I'm sick. I got sick. You feel me? So it was like now, nothing. It was nothing. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I was going. And then, you know, that's, that's sometimes desperation breed, makes you do things foolish, and sometimes desperation breeds ingenuity. Exactly. Right. Right. Now, you know right. the sad I know. Part, but you know the sad part about it, though? This, this, this is the sad part about this. Now, I got this 401K. Now, I'm trying to teach people about this now. I want to teach people. Now, I come to this. Now, this dude, I'm telling him, I'm like, yo, I got a 401k, and I'm we talking, you know, chopping it up with my money, and I'm like, yo, I got a 401k, you feel me? With da da da, he like, hey, yo, Phil Sack, you don't got four hundred and one thousand dollars. You know what? You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, hey, hey, yo, like, 
Because most, most people just don't know. That's why I said, like, right. most people are, are ignorant ignorant to facts. You know, ignorance right. is bliss. Hey, but but you know, but bliss. you know, the, you know, the flip side of that. Wasn't that, wasn't that a grown up? That wasn't a little man, kid. No, about. man, he had a job and everything. Now, I did laugh at him, but then I, ta- I, I showed him what a 401k was, and to this day, he had the 401k, and he's building on it. And that's, that's, what's up. that's what's up. You feel me? Like, he didn't even yeah. know what it was. I did laugh at him, but I, I, I gave him that knowledge, and he has a 401k to this day, right now. Okay. Now, now, all I'm gonna say to my story is is homelessness to to homeowner. What you need to right. do, like that's 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 where I was at. I was my lowest was when I was homeless, living in a shelter, and now I own my own home. The level of that's, that's like the, the level of back against the wall and and with the and with the daughter that when she was young and she don't even remember standing in the shelter. I talk to her about it often now. But I'm like, this is how, like, I don't ever want you to be in that situation. I want you to always be pushing forward. That's why I show you the thing, show you. My, my daughter at 17 has her own bank account. She had a job since she was um, 15. She, you know, just um, switched jobs, and she did it the right way. She did it the right way. Two weeks notice and went to the second job. Like, this is what I'm teaching you how to progress as an adult because, God forbid, the Lord take me any day. I need you to be prepared for what's going to happen with you. I know thirty. Right. I know thirty-five years old who never who never cast a check at cast a check at a bank. Mm-hmm. Well, I, 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 I know niggas who to this day don't even have a bank account, bro. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. To this day, I, 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 my you know one of, one of my businesses is transportation, and you know I give a dude you know, oh he always hit me up. He's like, I need to go cash my check. And I take him to the check cash and I now this cause it is gonna cost me money, but I'm trying to help him out. I'm like, bro, I'm like, you getting paid. You paying me you paying me right. to take you to go cash your check for them to take they money out your check, check to cash it for you. Right. I said, bro, I said, I said I said, bro, you old child for I thought about I said, bro, you only got no kid. I like so like ain't nobody go you don't owe nothing like why what like ain't nobody about to go in your money you know what I mean? <laughs> like what like like bro what are you doing you costing yeah, yourself yeah. at least forty dollars out your check <laughs> that you can keep what in you your pocket cash it like just add, like just add that up just for a minute just, just add like, that up bro. Uh, bro. Then I go to the bank. Why, 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 I pay for most of my vacations off fifty dollars a, a paycheck. So if you are well, spending forty dollars, you know, just to get your check, that's crazy. That's crazy. Hey, wow. and, I, and I'm telling, and he still, and like it took him a minute. You know what I mean? And his 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 his, his, his resolve was he'll ride his bike to the check cashier spot. You know what? Uh, I can't. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy I mean, you can only you can like, only my whole force point. water. You can't force me. Let me tell you something, bro. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Do Do you know what the most the most dangerous person in the world is? A nigga that ain't never been nowhere. That ain't never been out of the hood. Word up. That's the most I'm telling you because all he know is the violence and, and everything that he see every day. And if he didn't if he ain't going nowhere but in like a two mile rate a two square foot mile radius, do you know the bullshit that go on in the hood every day? Man, yeah. man, listen. Yeah. And but man it's it's not totally it's not completely our fault that we ain't learned this stuff in school, but like I said, we're in this information age now, and we got all this information that's, like, right in our hand. We got all these expenses. Right. Like, we can do so much with the information, but it's like, I don't know. What you said, we oh, like, we so lazy. Like, we are never, man, we, we, we will never stop going as hard as we go. We, we looking for different ways to get the information out there. We'll never stop. I don't care if people don't want to hear it. Some people are not going to want to hear it. Some people are going to want to hear it. Like, we'll never stop. That yeah, will never as, have a dwelling as on as y'all help one. As long as y'all help one person, y'all did y'all job. Yeah. 
That's I'm right. Uh, I sold stacks a long time ago. Like I already one, know one person a day. My I goal is one know. person a day. I already know that. Um, not open. Like I, like I go, I went in already knowing that you know our people are not receptive to this type of information because it's not it hasn't been made popular. I already knew that going mm-hmm. in. So the exactly. goal is to encourage and promote, encourage and promote this mindset before some shit happens in their life. That they have to go hard, like cause, you know, you know that happened to you know both you guys. Like, all right, you know what? I gotta go make it on my own. Like, I gotta go out and go hard on my own and make this happen because some shit happened. But how about we, how about we uh, encourage and promote this stuff before something before. happens? Right. Yeah. Preventative. Preventative. Well, you, know, you, know, you know, the one the one thing I always say is 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 make make business ownership. Second streams of income, investments, make it a first thought instead of a second thought. Make it exactly. the first choice instead of the second choice. You know, that's one thing I've always taught my kids is before you go out here and work for somebody, learn how to work for yourself first. <laughs> learn how to start your own business, find your own passion, do your own thing. Because if all else fails, if 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 you do end up in a job and you got to have something to fall back on, at least you already had this experience, or at least you already have this stepping stone, at least you already have this jump off point, you know, but if not, but hey, what if it, what if it makes it big, then you're good, you, you can continue, and you can add on to it, do something, do something extra, do something additional to what you're doing, you know, get those multiple streams coming in, and you know, fact. I mean, it's, it's it's huge, and you definitely got to teach them that early. I mean, I'm I'm proud to say my my middle daughter, if, if nobody else got it, you know, she's out here doing. She's got two businesses, and she and she sometimes works a, a regular job when she's when she's having a, a, a slow period. But other than that, she got her businesses going, doing her thing. So it's 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 definitely sticking, you know. But you got to do that early on, you know. You gotta you gotta mm-hmm. start them off. I mean, sometimes I gotta slow my 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 youngest daughter down sometimes. So she be trying to sell everything in the house, you know. So. <laughs> It's like, it's like, oh, let's, let's, let's get finished right. in middle school. Let's, you know, it's like we got like uh, get ahead we of got me. like three minutes. We got like three minutes left, fellas. So okay, we want so y'all yeah. to give out y'all information. Um, bottom line is, we want to be proactive instead of reactive. You know what I'm saying? You know, like you just said, like teaching this stuff on the rip so they don't have to learn it once they, you know, or have have to have to do it once their back is against the wall. But um, you can definitely reach us at Rappin' Doe, R-A-P-P-I-N underscore D-O-U-G-H on Instagram. And definitely tap into the podcast every Tuesday, 9 o'clock, um, on the Rappin' Doe channel on YouTube. So it's pretty simple. You can get to it. Well, we also sure. post the links. You know, we be posting the links on our regular personal pages, too. All over. We everywhere, man. One last next time, we will change the narratives. That's a fact. Appreciate y'all. And we appreciate yeah. y'all. No, we appreciate y'all you coming on the show. Man. We appreciate no y'all no having doubt. us, man. For helping us spread yes, knowledge. Because you got to know the ledge. That's a fact. Uh, appreciate well, y'all. Yeah, thanks again for joining us. And, 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 and we might, and we gonna come hop. And if, and if y'all ever get time, now I mean we'll come hop on, on, on y'all show. Oh, we oh, with it. Oh, we absolutely. with it. Glad to have you. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, uh, that's what's up. That's what's definitely. up. Definitely. All right, All right. and Clint, I'll be in contact with you on that. Clint, I got you. Uh, all right, bet. You already know. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Right. Uh, Till next time. Peace, beloved. All right, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peace. Bye, Jack. Peace. She said 90 seconds. So it's about to be done. Go ahead, wrap it up. Go ahead, wrap it up. Uh, huh? Wrap it up. All right, thanks, guys, for listening tonight. Um, uh, Follow us at GFT underscore radio on Instagram and Twitter. Um, go to all our pages. Put us in Google and like, subscribe to everything. Cop the merch, teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash GFT radio. Clint. See you all in seven days. Bye, guys.
Alan.